Wait, is this just gate? Chapter 210. Written by Pepper Antique. Anyways that's how things are here. 80 caliber pistols in the hands of rookies and, patching up lizards. James said into the new phone that Earth had sent over to replace the one the golem fight had broken. How are things in Jade Sport? You sure you don't want me to come over there? James waited the few moments that it took for his message to send through the drone network. Then Amina smiled a little. I'm sure. She said with an audible sigh. We've got a new cordon set up around the blight zone. We've redistributed the arrows and rune stones. She shook her head. There's been zero activity since the explosion. Nobody has gone missing in the area that couldn't be explained. She shrugged. On the upside. SIG took the advice of your scientists and stuck his arm and hand into a blight. He has his hand back on now. That's Dash, James started. But he'd forgotten the lag and Amina continued. So they've managed to help a hand, sorry, oh, the connection Dash, she paused. Anyways the healers have managed to heal a few of the people who were um, partially vanished. So. Some good news here. She said. James waited to see if she said any more. Well, I'm glad to hear that. He said. How much longer do you think you're gonna be there? It's getting warm here. Another pause. Then a smile split Amina's face. Eager to get married my love? She yawned, covering her mouth as she did. WWEE should. Be leaving in three days. She said through the yawn. He may be a little bit. He admitted. Plus I think we could both use a vacation. Even if it does have royal duties attached to it. Once her yawn was finished Amina nodded slowly. I haven't had a real vacation since I joined the army. She said sleepily. James smiled as he looked at the image of his fiancé fighting off sleep. He moved his mouth closer to where the microphone on the phone was. Get some sleep. He whispered. We can talk more tomorrow. Okay. She said as she laid back with her eyes close. Love you. Glad you kicked that golem's ass. James let out a small, quiet, laugh. Love you too. Get back here fast. But be safe. Amina was already snoring lightly, letting out small whistles every so often. James looked around as if looking for observers, despite being alone in their room. Then he recorded about 30 seconds of her snoring before disconnecting. He set the sound on a loop as he went to bed. It was the perfect white noise to help him get to sleep. Werner held her hand over the injured soldier's leg, a simple laceration from a training incident, and listened to the healing instructor's guidance. Remember! The silver-haired orc said from where she was walking past another trainee who was tending to a cook with a burned hand. At these early stages of healing magic it's less about your medical knowledge, and more about your visualization process. She stepped up near Werner who was focusing on the energy in her hand. Not that she'd managed to actually manifest any magical energy yet. At least not that she knew of. You know. More or less. What his leg should look like. How it should be put together. She said as she laid her hand over the leg as well. Visualize that image, that movement, in your mind. Then push that image through the same thoughts that are focusing on your energy. Werner nodded eagerly but her hand still didn't glow with the amber light that other healers could. It's happening. The other trainee said excitedly. Werner glanced over to see the boils on the chef's hand pulsating as the instructor quickly moved over to observe. I've got it. The young man said as his hand glowed. Slow. The instructor said, causing the trainee to look back. Focus, don't let your excitement break your consent to dash. She paused as Werner heard a distinctly wet, pop, sound. A. Me hand. The cook bellowed before beginning to groan in pain. Asian. Finish the instructor. Back up please. She said as she calmly nudged the trainee, who looked terrified, out of the way. It's okay Remus. She said to the injured cook. It's still just a blown blister. Nothing we can't have fixed easily. 
Only her pointer finger glowed the amber light. But it was brighter than even the trainee's hand had been. Remus immediately began to look relieved as it moved over his affected hand. Focus! said one of the other healers who had taken up a position next to Werner, who had gotten distracted. A good healer must learn to maintain a cool head even in times of chaos. Or else they risk losing the patient in front of them. The healer placed a reassuring hand on the shoulder of the soldier. Though I doubt that recruit Borston needs to worry quite that much for a wee little cut on the shin. Borston smiled for a moment before wincing. I think I'll live. He said. Then he nodded to the commotion in the other bed. Long as none of that happens. He added with a laugh. Right. Sorry. Werner said as she channeled her focus back into visualizing the cut knitting itself shut and scarring over. The new instructor's eyes glowed with a red light as she watched, which Werner had to admit was a touch distracting. But she knew that it was just the magic user's way of inspecting another person's magical energy. After a few minutes Werner sagged. I don't have it yet. Do I? She asked. The healer looked at her with pity. How long have you been here now dear? She asked. Werner thought for a moment. Five months? Maybe six? The healer thought for a moment. I don't think the hero got his until right around that time either. And his powers didn't manifest until it was a life or death situation. She said. It's a normal thing. Your body isn't as saturated with magic as us native Petravians. You might need a catalyst event. She pondered for a few seconds. Don't know what kind of thing would have to happen to get a catalyst event for healing magic though. Catalyst event? Werner wondered. Like some kind of, do or die situation. Precisely. The young woman said with a smile. For the captain it was a fight to the death and a fight to save his lady love the princess Amina. She scrunched her face for a moment. And he had another one when the prince threw his spear at him during training. She looked back at Werner. Personally I think that one was just two fools doing what fools do. But apparently it worked. The healer gently pressed Werner out of the way before holding her hand over Borston's leg. Her hands glowed a bright amber, and only a few seconds later the light faded to reveal a healed injury, with only the faintest of scars. All better recruit. She said with a smile. Now back to your sergeant. I'm RM. Thank you. Borston said, also smiling. Then he turned to Werner. Keep training. You'll get it. He said cheerily. Werner smiled in return but it dropped off once he was walking away. Her hand tamped at her leg a few times before she stuck it in her pocket. We'll try again tomorrow ambassador. Said the head instructor from behind her, startling her out of her self-pity. None of us became healing adepts in a single day. It takes time. Go rest. Practice the methods we've given you. And we'll try again when you're ready. Werner nodded weakly before turning to leave. Vickers set the three drones up in the triangular formation in the courtyard that he'd been told to place them in. Then he lifted the pole up until it was as close to straight as he could get it, watching as the two securing lines tightened in the process. Once they were taught he grabbed the third line from off under his hand and pulled it tight. Then he began walking it out. The pole was exactly fifty feet tall, with a series of alternating black and white markings all up its sides until it ended in a foot of red paint. Vickers walked until he was nearly fifty yards away before the line in his hand tightened and ran out. He kneeled down with the end and sank the stake at the end of the line into the dirt, pressing it in with his booted heel. He pulled his tablet from his waist and opened the video feed. All right guys. We're set up on this end. He said. Copy that chief. Said the lead scientist for this particular experiment, a Dr. Bradley Oko something. The doctor interacted with something at his computer. Drones launching. Now. Vickers watched as the three drones rose straight up, and fast. None of them deviated more than an inch or so from their position, likely only having to correct for wind, and kept going upward with a loud buzz. 
Vickers watched them curiously for a minute or so before they were up above the light cloud cover. Acceleration and elevation gain are good. The doctor said on his side, likely speaking to himself Vickers knew. Right where those models should be at. How are batteries reading? He asked someone on the other side. All right good. Balloon team be ready. Anything else you need me here for doc? Vickers asked curiously with one last glance upward. Hum? Oh. No. You're good chief. The scientist assured him. The process is gonna take a few hours at a minimum. And that's assuming everything goes right. We'll get in touch once we've got a confirmed drop. Then we'll have to get some numbers crunched before we even confirm anything. Got it. He said. How's this gonna help us get back again? Nice try chief. General said we'd tell you when we confirm our suspicion. Right. Right. Vickers replied. I'ma go grab some lunch. Call you in a few chief. The doctor said before Vickers disconnected. Vickers looked up into the sky one more time, suspicious of the need to veil some kind of atmosphere test or whatever this was. Then he headed inside. As he stepped through the nearby door he thought he felt the ground rumble, as if an earthquake was occurring. But it only lasted a split second and after a moment of waiting for it to continue or repeat, he realized that he must have been mistaken. Really hope Choi didn't find some new way to blow himself up. He said with a sigh. Again. The tendrils protruding from the blight waved anxiously as they devoured the mountain that they'd managed to come into contact with. The entity behind them luxuriated in the mass being added to its ever-expanding, ever-hungry, formless belly as the tumbling land feature fell into the tendrils and their openings. It paused its journey long enough for the rest of the mountain to finish collapsing into it. Then it continued in its original direction. But now it was minutely faster in its motion. And several new blights blinked into existence. New, smaller, tendrils protruding from them. The new appendages were just as hard to see as their larger counterparts. A griffin rider by the name of Pragota Strongmore, a young and reckless werewolf, had his mount in a hover nearby as he watched the mountain collapse in on itself before seemingly disappearing into thin air. What in the hells? He asked himself as his griffin, Tira, flapped her wings to stay aloft. You see that girl? He asked. Tira looked back at him before shaking her head in confusion. Come on. Let's take a look. He said, kicking her forward. Neither of them ever saw the thing that made them cease existing. One moment they were flying. Then Pragota yelped as he saw Tira's beaked head disappear just like the mountain had. Then they were gone.